Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know-It-All. I want to start with a little bit of a story today. This is from a couple of weeks ago. My wife and I were going downtown to Athens to return something that she had purchased, and it turned out there weren't really any parking spaces around, and so, you know, I just suggested, look, you just drop me off in front of the store, I'll run in and return it, and then we'll come back out and meet up and you circle in the meantime. No big deal, right? Well, the problem was that I forgot this, my cell phone, when I went in there, and so I went in to return it, realized that I had no way of communicating communicating with her about how to do the pickup, any of that sort of stuff. And so after I finished the return, I walked back outside and just sort of stood there for five minutes thinking about the fact that this felt like about 30 years ago, back to like the mid 1990s, before I even owned a cell phone, much less a smartphone. And of course, that got me thinking about how indispensable smartphones are to our society today. And of course, there's the saying that a kid who's like 15 or 20 years old today would rather have their arm chopped off than lose their phone. I mean, obviously, that's an exaggeration. But what it gets at is the indispensable nature of a smartphone now. The, these things are, are indispensable to the way that we live. And that's propagated out from, you know, the more tech savvy people, the beginning of the S curve of adoption to really most of the planet at this point. It's pretty shocking. Even people who live in countries where there aren't really like landlines or even electricity that's being piped into villages and stuff have solar power and are able to charge up relatively smartphones, right? They're not current top of the line frontier models but they work really, really well. And they're able to get on things like Starlink or other local types of internet access. So basically what started as, as kind of a curiosity as something that was for tech forward type of people in first world countries to utilize has become indispensable to the world and the way it operates and the way that people learn things and have access to information and access to goods as well. Because of course you can order things on there and have physical items delivered to your house using just a smartphone and an internet connection. So the question that I started thinking about a couple of weeks ago was, where are we in the artificial intelligence, the generative AI adoption curve? Are we at that very, very small sliver of the S curve where the, the tech forward people are using it? Have we reached the beginning of the middle part of this? Have we gotten to the end of the S curve where it's up at the top? I don't think that that's the case at all. But the important part here is again, by somewhat of an analogy, are we at the time of the Palm Pilot or are we at the time of the iPhone coming out? And even though the technology difference is kind of iterative between a Palm Pilot and an iPhone, I bet most of you under a certain age don't even know what a Palm Pilot or a Palm Trio is. That was a kind of early version of a smartphone. But everybody knows what an iPhone is and what a Samsung Galaxy is and what a Pixel phone is and all of that kind of stuff. So at some point we went from technological curiosity that tech forward people, again, relatively well off people in first world countries were able to afford and utilize. And it was an interesting thing. We made a phase change to where society Society itself depends on this technology. Where are we in that same adoption curve? In other words, if we look back 30 years from 2025, will the AI that we see back then be equivalent to a Palm Trio or a Palm Pilot? In other words, early attempts to get towards this indispensable technology, or have we made the phase change already? Are we already at the first generation of the iPhone, the thing that would iterate and become completely indispensable to us? And this is where a couple of recent posts from Elon Elon Musk come in to bear on this topic, which is why I've got them showing here. So you've got XFreeze on August 21st said, XAI's long-term plan is to be an edge node running AI inference to generate pixels and audio. No more traditional OS or apps, but just AI rendering everything directly. And Elon reposted and responded to this. It's an easy prediction of where things are headed. In other words, he agrees with this. Devices will just be edge nodes for AI inference as bandwidth limitations prevent everything being done server side. So let's break this down just a little bit. First of all, an edge device would be something like this, like a phone or like your laptop. Johnny Ive, a famously Apple designer, is now working with some folks at OpenAI to create the next generation inference device that probably will not be a slab that looks like a phone. So in terms of the physical nature of the interface, it is likely to change. It's likely not to be a slab interface anymore, although it is possible that something like a phone might reside in your pocket all the time. But you might have something like glasses as the primary interface that then connects with your phone, sort of like like the meta Ray-Bans are right now, but much more sophisticated than that. Or of course, it might be something like a watch like this, or it might be something implanted in your brain or sitting next to your brain that interfaces directly with your brain. I don't think 
Johnny Ive is creating that. But you know, there's a lot of different possibilities of what this device might look like. But the important part that X Freeze and Elon Musk are talking about here is that these devices will have enough compute power, and they do already really, to run a level of inference. It won't be able to do the really sophisticated stuff, but basic things like asking, what am I looking at and stuff, which is already, it's a little kludgy. You can do this with Meta's Ray-Bans and everything right now. But the idea would be that you could talk to it. You could just have it as a companion. Quite honestly, I would rather have it be something I could do silently by thinking about it rather than talking, because talking is often quite awkward in public environments. But you never know. People talk on their earbuds right now. If you had dialed this back 30 years ago to, you know, people having these little white things sticking out of their ears and talking to themselves all the time, a lot of people would have been, you know, probably put in a sanatorium for a while to have them checked out to make sure they weren't insane. So we've gotten used to the fact that people just walk around talking to themselves, apparently talking to themselves all the time. That's that's become a standard thing over the past 30 years that wouldn't have been normal 30 years ago. And of course, the earbud might be an interface as well. You don't really need anything with a screen on it if you can just have it talk to you. Although I personally would like to have something where it would project something out and I would be able to like see something because as they say, a picture paints a thousand words. So rather than it having to tell me a thousand words, it'd be nice to just go like, here's a picture. Is this what you're looking for? And you're like, yeah, that's that's what I'm looking for. But the upshot of this is no matter what this device looks like or the physical instantiation of it, it will have enough compute power to do basic inference on device, and then it will have some sort of internet connection, a cell phone connection or Wi-Fi or something like that, where it can go to the cloud for more substantial tasks, more sophisticated tasks, things like that. We're already beginning to see this sort of thing happen today, although again, it's still very kludgy. And then following up on that other post, and this is a little bit more tangential, but I'll get around to why it connects up to this. Elon says, Colossus 2 built by XAI will be the world's first gigawatt plus plus AI training supercomputer, and he says it has a non-trivial chance of achieving AGI or artificial general intelligence, XAI is close to having all the pieces in place. So why does this matter? Well, it matters because the smarter these models get, the more kind of indispensable they will become to our lives. And so I know I've taken the long walk around this whole thing, but I'm going to get to the indispensable nature of things and where we are right now, at least in my opinion. But anyway, the smarter that these models get, the more indispensable they get. In other words, that intelligence, that information, that ability to give us what we want right now. And Elon actually did a post around the same time in which he said that AI will one-shot the human limbic system. In other words, it will learn how to feed us our dopamine hits. That has a positive and negative consequence. I mean, that could be a little bit scary if it's sitting there just feeding you what you want. You end up in that Wally sort of world where you're just sort of sitting there watching the TV or something. More than likely, it would be plugged directly into your brain. But you're getting little dopamine hits all the time, which is something that social media is already really good at. But if you imagine AI becoming even better than that at doing it, really, really directed at making your limbic system feel good, that's that's a kind of a terrifying thought. But of course, that would make AI indispensable to people, that dopamine hit. I mean, that's one of the reasons your phone, if it doesn't have a connection to the internet, to your social media and stuff, becomes kind of a dead slab. It's not really that useful. There's like a calculator and things like that. So basically, the phone at this point is the interface into to the internet, the internet 1.0, the version of it where you search for things, where you get social media feeds, all of that kind of stuff. A more 2.0 version of that internet is one in which you're getting things generated for you as you ask for them, and then potentially before you even ask for them. Like it learns you so well, it knows like, oh, John is just about to ask me for this. I will now give it to him. And he's like happy because he got the thing he wanted just before he realized he wanted it. And that's the kind of thing that will really one shot your limbic system system where it's like a step ahead of you and feeding you what you want. That's a little bit scary, but also is the exact kind of thing that would make this sort of AI incredibly indispensable to humans. So where are we in terms of the analogy of the Palm Pilot, the Palm Trio to the iPhone moment? I believe we're still in the Palm Trio sort of moment. We're in the kludgy interface proto smartphone kind of place where tech forward people like us that use AI a lot can see the potential, but it's still very awkward to use. It's not very perfect at all. It's still highly text based, which of course has a lot of friction in terms of being able to use it. It has friction in terms of input and output. So I think we're still at the Palm Pilot slash Palm Trio sort of level of this thing. When will we hit the iPhone moment? I think it's going to be relatively soon, but it's going to require something significant. It will look different. It will feel different than what we have today. And I think when a lot of us saw the iPhone, who are again of an age where we saw the things that happened before and afterwards, we were like, wow, this 
this has some serious potential. Now, Gen 1 of the iPhone was not all of that. It, it was very expensive. It didn't have an app store, but it had a web browser. It had the ability to go out on the internet and find things immediately. And the interface was substantially better. So you could begin to see where it was going to go. Now, yeah, it took about eight or 10 years or so for that to go from the tech forward folks to really indispensable in the world. But I think that those of us, you know, living in this bubble, when we see that new interface, that new technology, that new way of interacting with generative AI, we will collectively probably say like, yeah, this is the way forward. This is the thing. So while I don't think that AI is indispensable yet, even to those of us very tech forward folks, it's not indispensable yet. I think that we're closing in on that and it just requires is not even an architectural breakthrough in the nature of the models and things. They don't have to get that much smarter, although that obviously would help. But I think it's an interface thing. I think some sort of user experience improvement to make it as frictionless as possible is going to be the thing that leapfrogs it into the future, into that indispensable thing. Then, of course, it will take some period of time. I don't think it'll take 10 years because people already have smartphones and stuff. They're already wired up for all of this. It could happen within a year or two. But I think whatever that interface is, and I'll be really interested to see what OpenAI and Johnny Ive come up with, that might be the thing. But whatever this interface is, and it's not just a physical thing, but just the nature of the way that we interact with AI, when that improves significantly, when there's kind of a step change in the way that we interact with it, that is going to be the moment where all of us are going to go like, wow, this is the moment where AI is going to become indispensable on a global scale. Alrighty, folks, that's what I've got for you today. Let me know what you think in the comments. Do you agree with me? Do you think we're already at the indispensable stage? Do you think it's going to be a long ways off? Do you think that we need another interface UI improvement? Or can it just continue on as it is today? Let me know in the comments. While you're down there, if you don't mind liking the video, it really helps out with YouTube's algorithm. And of course, consider subscribing for more of this kind of content. And I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.